in the last couple of lectures i have been talking about what we said is einstein podolsky rosen paradox or in short the epr paradox the uh, paradox and a discussion of it is very central to quantum computing for the simple reason that if einstein's objections were right and if there were hidden variables in the problem our entire philosophy of doing computing through quantum mechanics would have had to be changed in other words we want to find out whether the copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics is right or are there quantities which are hidden from our view hidden for, from our consciousness which actually code the information about the physical properties of a system as i would like to repeat that the copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics says that a when you do a measurement any one of the eigen values of the operator corresponding to the physical observable will be realized with a probability in other words it is the process of measurement which gave it a value einstein's idea of realism says that a an object must have a physical property independent of the measurement process measurement process is simply a means of revealing the value of that physical property secondly there was a question of locality which says that if you make a measurement on one particle at one point in space and you make a second measurement on another particle at a far enough distance so that disturbance of having the measurement in the first instance cannot influence what measurement you are making in the second place and this is what is called the locality it is this dual property of local realism that is cornerstone of epr paradox or einstein podolsky rosen objection to the standard or the copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics and what we did in the last lecture is to uh, give you a gedanken experiment where we put quantum mechanics and hidden variables to test and we were able to derive an inequality which is a class of inequalities which goes by the name of uh, bell's inequality to check a, or provide a confirmatory test on which one is right there are many such inequalities in physics i would end this discussion on hidden variables and uh, quantum mechanics by another inequality which can provide a test for the correctness of either theory and this is what is known as ch sh inequality due to clauser horn simony and holt so the problem is we again come back to our uh, well known entangled state psi minus which is 0 1 minus 1 0 by square root of 2 the first particle is with alice and the second particle is with bob now i do a slightly different uh, measurement let us say alice can measure any two properties of the particle she holds now remember in order to do this i assume there are identical copies of this entangled states that are available to me so that i can make uh, experiments or i can observe any property that i like and take a statistical data so alice can measure two properties which we will call as q and r the pq or pr p for property while bob can measure two other properties s and t and each one of these four quantities can take a value either plus 1 or a minus 1 now let me illustrate it by a not non quantum mechanical example what do i mean by this suppose Alice and Bob have been given a supply of T-shirts, and the T-shirts are distinguished by 
four different properties. Out of which Alice can observe two properties and Bob can observe two other properties. They have the measuring equipment for doing those. So, for example, Alice can observe the color of the shirt which come in two colors. It could be red in which case she assigns the value 1 to her observation QQ or it could be blue in which case it is assigned a value minus 1. She could also observe the size of the t-shirt which could be large in which case she assigns a value plus 1 or medium which case is assigned a value minus 1. Bob has two other properties with the same supply. See he is interested in observing the price which is S. If it is high, we call it plus 1. If it is low, we call it minus 1. And the quality of the fabric which may be good or coarse. In the first case, we give it a value plus 1. In the second case, we give it a value minus 1. So, these are examples though in classical field of uh, observations which could be assigned values plus 1 or minus 1. Now, what do they do? So, firstly they just decide to measure a property at random. So, what does Alice do? Alice takes a coin, tosses it and for example, if it is head then she would look at its color and if it is tail then she would look at its uh, size. Likewise, Bob will also do an independent experiment tossing a coin. If it is head, he will look at the uh, price if it is tail, he will look at the quality of the fabric and get a result. And this result, they will keep track. That is, at the same instant, Alice measures one property and Bob measures another property. The, and so therefore, uh, these are not causally related because we assume Bob and Alice are separated by space-like distance. The, now, let us look at the what will they do? They will make a table so that we, we make a table the way we do in a lab observation number 1. What it means is Alice's first observation and Bob's first observation. So, Alice has measured one of the properties and uh, Bob has measured another we also write down which properties each has measured at a given time. So, what it means is that there are various pairings. So, since Alice is measuring the properties Q and R and Bob is measuring the properties S and T. So, I can have Q with S, Q with T, R with S and R with T. These are the various collections of pairs that are possible. Now, let me look at the value of the quantities which are Q s plus R s plus R t minus Q. Now, what does it mean? I pick up maybe first of set of observation where in the table I have Bob is measuring s, Alice is measuring Q. So, that is a Q s and from another part of the table I pick up an R s another part R t, another part Q t and I look at this quantity which is Q s plus R s plus R t minus, note the minus sign, minus Q t and this quantity I keep on tabulating it in sets of 4. So, this is the, so 4 observations will give me this, another 4 observation out of the table will give me this again like this. Now, if you look at this expression Q s plus R s plus R t minus Q t, I can combine them into Q plus R into s plus R minus Q into t. Now, look at this. Look at the right hand side. Since Q and R can take values either plus 1 or minus 1. So, one of these terms must be equal to 0. So, for instance, I could have q equal to 1, r is equal to 1, in which case the first q plus r is equal to 2, where r minus q is equal to 0. I could have q equal to minus 1, r is equal to minus 1. In that case, my first term is minus 2s, 
because and second term is still zero but suppose q and r are different so suppose q is plus 1 r is minus 1 then the first term is zero but the second term is minus 2 2 and likewise for uh, q is equal to minus 1 and r is equal to plus 1 so one of those terms on the right hand side either q plus r or r minus q term is 0 and when one term is 0 the other term can have either a value plus 2 or a minus 2. So therefore the quantity on the left hand side which is qs plus rs plus rt minus qt for a set of 4 observations takes the value either plus 2 or minus 2. Okay? And so what we have said is that this is what would happen if there are local hidden variables, if an object has a property independent of its observer. Because when we say, I gave you that classical example, color, fabric prices, quality of fabric price and all that and these are essentially classically fixed quantities. That is a, that is a property which is independent of the observation. Only during observation I know what is it. So if you now consider several sets like this, since each term is either plus 2 or minus 2, if I take an average of this, the average of the sum is sum of the average there, I can find out what is the expectation value or average value of qs plus rs plus rt minus qt and since each of the term gave me plus 2 or a minus 2, this sum has to be uh, less than or equal to 2 because remember because of that minus sign which is there. So let us look at what would happen if I believed in quantum mechanics. Now in quantum mechanics what I do is to consider Similar, similarly four properties, two of them with Alice Q and R, two of them with Bob S and T and since in quantum mechanics observables are given by operators having certain eigenvalues and I am saying that these eigenvalues can be either plus 1 or a minus 1, let me take Q is equal to just the uh, sigma Z, the Pauli Z matrix r is equal to sigma x Pauli x matrix and s and t are combinations of z and x in the way they appear on the slide. You can check of course you already know that sigma z and sigma x have eigenvalues plus 1 or minus 1 but it is trivial to check that s and t defined like minus z minus x by square root of t etc. It also gives uh, eigenvalues plus 1 or minus. Having done that, let us look at what do these things give me. Now I want to calculate expectation values of these four things that I wrote down, QR, uh, uh, QS, QT, RS and RT and do it in the entangled states which we have been talking about, namely 0 minus 1, uh, 0, 1 minus 1, 0 divided by square root of t. So let us do that calculation. So I have, now look at what is q, q is a simply z, uh, um, sigma z. So q acting on 0 is nothing but 0, but q acting on 1 is minus 1 because that is a sigma z. r, since it is an x gate, this will give me flip the bit. So r acting on 1 is 0 and r acting on 0 is 1. Now we define s as minus z minus x by square root of 2. So I have got this as 1 over square root of 2. z you remember is 1 minus 1 since there is a minus z. So I get minus 1 plus 1. And this is minus x, 
x only had off diagonal component 1 1 and because of this minus sign I get minus 1 minus. So, this is operator S and the operator T is Z minus X divided by square root of 2 and once again I have 1 over square root of 2, I put the Z, Z in its place and X with a minus sign in its place. So, let us calculate what does S acting on 0 give me. You can check immediately. This is one of them only I will work out minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1 acting on 1, 0. That is 1 over square root of 2 minus 1. And here I have got another minus 1. So, if you take out a minus sign 1 over square root of 2. I get 1 1. So, this is nothing but a Hadamard gate acting on the state 0 and then flipping a sign. So, Hadamard gate followed by a phase. So, this is equal to minus 1 over square root of 2 0 plus 1. Now, you can easily calculate what does S give you on 1. S giving on 1 gives you same way minus 1 over square root of 2 instead of 0 plus 1 you get 0 minus 1. That leaves us with T. So, T is we have worked it out 1 over square root of 2 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. So, T acting on 0 is 1 by root 2 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 acting on 1 0 and that is 1 over square root of 2 you can check this is 1 and this is minus 1. So, this is nothing but 0 minus 1 by square root of 2 and t acting on 1 similarly you can find out will give you uh, 0 minus of 0 plus 1 by square root. These are al trivial algebra which you can work with. So, what am I interested in? I am interested in the calculating the quantities expectation values in the state side. So, now that I have worked out what does uh, Q R S T acting on 0 and 1 give me. So, let us look at. So, for instance, I will just do one calculation. What does Q S give? So, what am I doing? I have a 1 over square root of 2 in my state twice. So, I have got 1 by 2. bra 0 1 minus bra 1 0. Now, I have a q. So, let me write this as q s and 0 1 minus 1. This obviously has 4 terms. So, I got 1 by 2. Let me just expand this out. I get 0 1 Q S 0 1 minus 0 1 Q S 1 0 minus 1 0 Q S 0 1 and plus 1 0 Q S 1 0. Now, since I already know the properties of Q and S. Uh, so, let us look at what this give me. So, I get let us look at the first term. So, I have 0 1 q s 0 1. So, q acting on 0 is 0. 
Now, S acting on 1 we have written down. So, this is 0, 1. S acting on 0 is uh, minus 1 by root 2. So, I have got a 0 and S acting on 1 gives me 2 things there. So, I get either a 0 or I get a 1. So, therefore, I get a 0, 0 minus 0. So, look at this. So, I get a term here. There is a 1 by root 2 there, but in fact, the only uh, non zero term comes from this term, this 0, 1 with this 0, 1. And there is already a minus sign there. So, I get a 1 over square root of 2. All others, you notice this is 0, 0. So, therefore, uh, this would be uh, orthogonal to this as well as to the other term. And so, I will be left with simply a 1 over square root of 2. And likewise, you can calculate the expectation value of each term. Now, if you do this, they, it turns out that first three terms are 1 over square root of 2 and the last term is minus 1 over square root of 2. So, that when you add them up, you get total uh, of four terms each having 1 over square root of 2. In other words, if I add them up, I get this term. First three terms are square root of 2, the fourth term is minus square root of 2. So, therefore, the inequality in this case will be Qs plus Rs plus Rt minus Qt is 2 times square root of 2. And this violates CHSS inequality, which we worked out for the classical case. In other words, it provides a test of which one is right. 